Do you want to learn another cool strategy to help you solve difficult Sudoku puzzles? In this video, I'll show you that plus so much more. Let's get started. Greetings friend, Timberlake here. I am continuing my month of Sudoku. This is tutorial day. I'm going to show you a super powerful solving strategy. How to spot and solve alternate inference chains type 2. I've not really talked about this one before. First though, I want to mention I'll be uploading a bonus video today. I'm going to solve a puzzle by Yoshi Baroshi. It's a special video. So you're getting two videos today. Be on the lookout for that one. Now, back to AIC Type 2s. Okay, this video won't make a lot of sense if you haven't seen my video on alternate inference chains Type 1, because this kind of builds upon the AIC Type 1. And if you don't understand the whole Christmas uh, lights looking thing I got going on here, go back, watch AIC Type 1 tutorial, and then come back here. All right, if you have seen that, and you've seen me solve some of these more difficult puzzles, and you, but you want to go, okay, how do I do this AIC Type 2 thing? I'm ready to help. All right, so this is our first example, and this particular puzzle is uh, par various by Bondi. A great puzzle. I really enjoyed it. Bondi's made many great puzzles for me. And so I went through and I did all the strong links, uh, recreated what I had in the puzzle at, at a, kind of the midpoint of the video here. And so, like, you see these ones, that means there's a strong between these ones in this row. It happens to be in this block as well. Like these threes have a strong link in the block. This two has a strong link in that row. Understand? Okay, so we're looking for an alternate inference chain type two. So what is the difference? Well, the difference is um, that you're not, you're, you're not going to start and end with the same candidate. You're actually going to uh, start in one cell and with a candidate and you'll end in a different cell in the same house, so you're going to be in the, you'll end in the same row or column or block as the start cell, but with a different candidate. All right, you are, it's still going to be a series of strong weak links. It's still something that you need to show all the candidates. But what, like I said, you actually have to shift your thinking because when you do like a uh, XY chain or an AIC type one, you're always going strong link, strong link, you know, strong and weak links to get to the end to, you know, start with a nine, end with the nine, and you can limit all the nines. Not the case here, all right? So let's go and I'll show you the AIC type two and kind of show you why it works. So we start here in this cell, and I found this during the actual solve, right? And so what you do is you go, okay, this seven has a strong link to this seven right here. So strong is seven, weak to this two, strong to this two, uh, weak to this three, strong to this three, weak to this eight, strong to that eight. Okay, so we started in this seven and we ended here with this eight. And I'll just make that purple. What is it telling you? One, like you notice, I started with seven and with an eight. Two, it's in the same house, so it's the same column. What it tells you is you're going, okay, if this was a seven, then this right here couldn't be a seven. And if it's not a seven, then what you would have is an eight right here, which means that this cell would not be a seven in either case. So now you flip it and you look at the eight and these things go forward and reverse. So just how I went from seven all the way to this eight, I could go backward. I could go strong this eight, weak to the three, strong to the three, weak to the two, strong to the two, weak to the seven, strong to the seven. Works forwards and backwards. This eight is either right here, and so this couldn't be an eight, or this is not an eight. If that's not an eight, we just went through this whole chain and said, okay, this eight's false, then this cell would be a seven. And so what you can do is you can eliminate the start candidate from the end cell, and you can eliminate the end candidate from the start cell. And that's why, I had a hard time kind of grasping this, but the reason being is, you know, this is either an eight and that can't be, or if it's not an eight, this cell is something else. Once you start to find these, it makes for really cool solves because they're kind of, you'll, you'll see them and it'll be a little bit quicker to go. You just have to switch your thinking a little bit about, oh, I'm going to end in a, uh, with a can that's not 
the one I started with. Hopefully that made some sense to you. All right, now that I did that, I actually want to mention something else about this puzzle. It's been bugging me ever since I first showed it on my channel. And something Bondi pointed out to me. Uh, do you notice anything unique, cool about these end corner uh, cells? You probably notice there's a 1-4 here, 3-4 there, 2-3 here, and a 2-1 there, and they're all colored, right? Well, this forms a continuous loop. And the way Bind designed the puzzle, and you think about it, that if a 4 is not here, it has to be here, right? And if this isn't a 4, it's got to be a 3 because either the 3 is here or it's there. And this isn't a 3, it's got to be a 2 because if a 2 is here or here, if this isn't a 2, it's a 1. Because of these limitations of these strong links, basically these four candidates, one, two, three, and four, are limited to those four cells. So what you could, what I could have done and what I missed in my original solve is I could have eliminated all these extra candidates. Because it can't, it can't be any of those extra candidates for the reason I just described. It's got to be one, two, three, or four in these four cells. And by doing that, you would have been able to solve, I would have been able to solve that for a nine. And once you solve this for a nine, um, you can move a lot quicker to the solve this puzzle. But I wanted to show that, and I even made a comment about it after I solved the puzzle. Uh, great, tremendous. Let's move on to our next example. All right, for our next example, this puzzle is Long Distance Relationship by RSP. And all these uh, original solves I'll put in a link below. I'll also put a link, if you want to solve the puzzles, you want to try them yourself, uh, maybe you find a different way of solving them, that'd be great. And so we're going to start right here in the original solve. And what I had noticed was a alternate inference chain type two. And so we start here with the seven and go seven has a strong to the seven, weak to the six, strong to this six, weak to the nine, strong to this nine, weak to this three, strong to that three, weak to the five, strong to that five, weak to the two, strong to this two, weak to the four, strong to this four right here. And so what that means is we're looking, hey, is this a 7? Okay, if that's a 7, this can't be a 7. But if it's not a 7, this cell is a 4. So it still can't be a 7. We made it a 7 right there. Um, and also you can look at, you know, is this a 4? Then this, there'd be no 4 right here. If it's not a 4, you know, then this cell would be something different. Uh, what you notice in my first two examples is you weren't able to eliminate one of the candidates from the start cell. That happens. You can eliminate one candidate or you can eliminate both one from the start and one from the end i believe there's another variation which i'm not going to show that you can actually solve both of these cells if you have the right kind of aic type 2. but right now all mine are just about eliminate candidates so you can eliminate that seven and that helps uh move on with the rest of the puzzle something else i wanted to kind of tell you about with the aic is this is actually also a form of a discontinuous loop I'm not going to do a full tutorial on discontinuous loops. There's actually three kinds of those. But what I want to show you is that this, you know, AIC type 2 is a discontinuous loop uh, minus one of the steps. So, and it's the discontinuous, it's like the type 1. So, again, if you look here, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. What the discontinuous loop does is it adds in two of the same types. So it adds in two weak links or two strong links to an otherwise normal uh, continuous loop. So it'd be a weak to that seven, weak to this seven, and go. And by the rules of discontinuous loop, since uh, if you attack, you know, either you start with the seven or you start with the four, you know, this would never be able to be a seven because of the weak, weak situation. So you can still eliminate that seven right there. But just imagine there's actually a weak link to the seven, weak link to that seven, then you go back to strong. But I wanted to point out, if you hear discontinuous loop uh, and AIC type two put together, that's why. Let's move on to our next example. For our next example, I'm gonna go back to this puzzle, Mirror by Lee Ran. Uh, great puzzle, hard solve for me. I used all kinds of techniques to get there, including an AIC type two. I actually used two different AIC type twos. So I wanted to show you those again. Um, if you remember, the key of this puzzle is actually a continuous loop that's in these inside cells, um, right here and here and here and here. And most of my solving came off of that uh, continuous loop. So let's go here and I'll show you, uh, there's actually two different AIC type twos you can solve involving this cell right here. So, 
So you start with this one right here. You're going to go strong to this one, weak to the eight. Strong to the eight, weak to the three, strong to the three. And we end in this cell right here. And realize this three and this three are not strongly linked to each other. Uh, you'll see there's a, there's threes in the middle. These these three strings are strongly linked along the column, right? But what it tells you is that this is a one that can't be a one. If it's not a one, this cell's a three, so we can still eliminate that one right there. Conversely, if we had a three here in this cell, we could eliminate that uh, three right there. But we don't in this particular case. Now there is another. AIC type 2 you can solve starting with this cell. And it's actually going to go up to that cell. So I wonder if you can see it. It's a pretty quick one. Okay, here you go. Strong, weak to the 8, strong to this 8. Weak to this 2, strong to that 2. Weak to this 2, you know, surrogate, weak link, strong to that 8. And so we started with this one, we ended that 8. So what that means is you know, this is a 1, it can't be a 1 there, and if it's not a 1, this is going to be an 8. Conversely, you can go backwards, right? Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So either this is an 8 and that is, can't be an 8, or this is not an 8 and this is going to end up being a 1. And so there was another AIC, type 2, involving this cell right here. I thought that was kind of cool. I wanted to show you those two different ones. Okay, I saved a really cool example for my last one. This is Switch Scheme by RSP. Again, the link's going to be below. You can also try it out. Tough puzzle. One thing I don't want to talk about before we get to the actual solve is where do you look for AIC tattoos? Where, you know, what, how would you draw your eyes to it? That's something I always want to mention. And the answer, I would say, is you're going to get a mo most of your fruit from looking in a block or house that has a lot of multicolored cells running through it. So right here in block five, this is where all the action is. See, because you're connecting between threes and sixes, and then the fours and the fives, the ones, the sevens, it all adds up, and then you kind of shoot out to some of these other cells to get some illuminations. So here is the AIC type two that I found that cracked this puzzle. So you start with this nine down here, right? Strong the two. Weak to this two, strong to this two. Weak to the seven, strong to this seven. Weak to the one, strong to that one. Weak to the five, strong to that five. Weak to the four, strong to this four. Remember, we started a nine here and the four here. That means we can eliminate a four from right here, and we can eliminate a nine from right there. And anytime you eliminate a cell when you're doing the coloring that had a color, that means you're going to be able to make it a solve right away. And in this particular case, we can actually solve you know, this cell for a four. And then we can sell this one for a nine because we just took away that nine. And then what you'll notice is the puzzle falls apart. And I'm, I'm going to remove all the coloring to show you that we can just solve the rest of the puzzle. So I removed all the colors to show you that we can now solve the rest of this puzzle. And so you notice, you know, you got the four gone right there. This has to be a nine now because we got rid of that colored nine. And you work your way up here and we'll just start solving six, seven, nine. Yeah, one, two, one, two, that can't be a two, that has to be a seven, actually. And, you know, kind of work through here. And you'll probably just notice these are going to be a lot of just uh, naked singles, maybe some pairs that I am able to solve, but we'll just kind of work our way through that. So alternate inference chain type two can be a very valuable resource because then you can use them to crack a puzzle like I cracked this puzzle here. There's only one eight left in there. Solve that for four. Uh, you know, there's only one six, only one nine, so I can make those solves. Three, four, three, four, that has to be a five, nine, three. See how that works? And now you got uh, only one eight left there. Three, four, three, four, two, seven, two, seven, two, seven, one, okay, two, one, two, so that has to be a seven. And I think that's going to kind of make it, the rest is pretty easy peasy. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, how do you like this stuff? Is this kind of over your head or you kind of want more content to solve even harder strategies? Because I'm always looking to learn more about Sudoku. In the meantime, um, come back and watch videos all the way to the end of February. And then I'll go back to at least two a week. If you can't wait that long, check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you all so much for watching.